the topic that we'll be discussing now is once again pressure and we'll be discussing the next topics that were left in the previous ones um we've already discussed the we've already discussed the concept of pressure the concept and the basic formula and that was divided by area is equal to pressure and how there are some certain rules when we talk about uh, pressure in liquids the pressure is directly proportional to the depth and the density so this is what we you know basically studied by now and also hydraulic machines which comes into this uh, topic too so this is what we're basically uh, studied we are going to um, this is going to be an extension of the pressure in liquid form and we're going to study the mathematical formula and basically the basically the the, the mathematical formula and the applications of this formula on the different objects and different instruments and how they're used so we're going to go through that okay so we've already discussed that uh, the pressure of an object that the pressure of an object is directly proportional to its depth or we can call it height and that it was also directly proportional to another thing that we studied which is its density that we said the higher the density of an object it would be the greater the pressure would be applied on that object or on that surface whatever we're talking about and designing a dam an engineer has to calculate the pressure at various depths below the water surface the pressure increases with depth and density never yeah, well, we already know that so an expression for the pressure at depth h now it's very important to note uh, that we shouldn't confuse this depth with height because height is taken in consideration from the lower datum or lower reference point and depth is taken from the upper reference point because uh, the more the further we go downwards the uh, sorry So depth is basically the, uh, the downwards we go or the deeper we go it increases and height is the opposite that the higher or the upper we go it increases. So we're talking about depth but we are going to take it as h, the symbol that is going to represent depth is going to be h. Force acting vertically downwards on A equals the weight on the liquid column of height h and cross section the area above it. So whatever the expression for liquid pressure is, it's very important to note that it will be equal to the uh, value of pressure that we calculated from the from the older formula of pressure, which is that pressure is equal to force divided by area. And that is how it equates to it. If we okay, now we're going to basically find out how we are going to derive this expression for liquid pressure. Volume of liquid is equal to H multiplied by A, where A is the area of that uh, element or of that cube, and that multiplied by the depth is equal to the volume of liquid column so this is basically this whole is the area and that multiplied by the height it will basically be equal to the volume of liquid column because cross-section area into height so go 
class section into height. Now we've got that. This gives us the volume. Now where are we going from that? Since volume multiplied by density gives us the mass, we have this expression that h multiplied by a multiplied by rho. Rho basically represents the density. I'm going to put it like this over here to really um, differentiate it from any other symbol like that of p or some other thing. Taking a mass of 1 kg to have 1 uh, 10 newton, which means that we're taking basically the gravitational acceleration as 10 meters per second squared. Okay, so the rate of liquid column is going to be this. Now, this was the mass if we multiply it with this thing, if we multiply them both, we are going to get the rate of the column. So this is the weight or this is the force on the object. So 10 H A B. Now if I divide it with the area of the cross-section area, very important to note that we are talking about the cross-section or the contact area, this A gets cancelled out because we use that initially to find out the volume. So that gives us 10 H rho. Now this 10 can be easily uh, you know, we can make this 10 instead of that, we can add a g over it to the properties of the size or what it means. So this 10 is supposed to be the gravitational acceleration, right? So instead of writing 10, we can just write g. So rho g h where rho is the density, g is the gravitational energy, and h is the depth, we get the liquid pressure expression that can be used in all the calculations. And if you uh, use this expression and then you use the other expression of pressure is equal to force force divided by area where force is the weight of the liquid then the both will give you the same answer. I mean that's obviously because the same formula of pressure is equal to force divided by area is used to derive it. So you basically just back out a little bit. Okay. Pressure at a depth for a fluid of constant density. Pressure at depth in a fluid of constant density is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere plus pressure due to the weight of the fluid or P is equal to P naught plus rho G H. So that basically means that pressure at some depth that if we're talking about um, let's just say this liquid So this is supposed to be the this liquid which is or this air is or this gas let's just say this gas right this gas which is filled in and here now this is the gas this is the medium and you do magnetometer and then it's like this now the other side is just open to atmosphere now we know that since uh, these two levels, this level and this level, they are not equal, then that means that the gas is definitely not at atmospheric pressure. So that basically tells us that uh, the pressure at depth in a fluid of constant density um, is equal to the atmospheric pressure plus the pressure due to the weight of the fluid. If we talk about some other ocean or some other water body and we're talking about, let's just say, this uh, pressure at this point, so instead of just uh, giving the pressure as a rho gh, where this is the depth, uh, if we have to find out the absolute pressure, not the relative pressure with the atmosphere or any other thing, if we find out the absolute pressure, the exact pressure at that point, it's very important to add the atmospheric pressure because there is no um, atmospheric pressure with some uh, density of air and some height of air multiplied by g that we are you know, knowing and we're finding out this. So instead of calculating this all we just have a set value for atmospheric pressure and we use it and add the other 
calculation or the additional calculation. So here P is the pressure at a particular depth, we know this is the pressure at atmosphere, so is density, and V is the acceleration. This pressure has equal in all directions of depth and depends only on H and V. Uh, its value will be in Pascals if H is in meters and rho if it is in kilograms per meter cube. Okay. Now we're going to uh, move towards the types of pressure gauges. Um, the first gauge or the first instrument that we had is Borden gauge. Now what happens is that this gauge or this uh, instrument it basically works like a toy. The harder you blow into the paper tube, uh, the more it uncurls. So what happens is that uh, when you apply some, some, some pressure over here, there's like this pipe that will blow something or it will give some pressure to this gear, which will in turn make this needle move respectively, right? So that's how it basically works. In a boring gauge, when a fluid pressure is applied the curve, the metal tube tries to straighten. Yeah, so this will try to straighten out and rotates a pointer over the scale. And as it straightens, it will move the gear. This gear has some teeth on it over here. You can see that it's not straight. It has some you know, teeth-like structures over here. So it will move and that will basically make the uh, pointer or the arrow while it is attached to it. Okay. So in figure, each surface of the liquid is acted on equally. Now, now we're talking about uh, basically the U2 millimeter. And the figure is on the next slide, but uh, still it's pretty easy to basically understand what the uh, U2 millimeter is and how it works. In figure, each surface of the liquid is acted on equally by atmospheric pressure, and the levels are seen as one side is just connected to. For example, the gas supply, the gas exerts pressure on surface A and level B rises on the pressure of gas G as equal to atmospheric plus pressure due to column B C. Um, now, initially, they both are at the same level, that's because they are both open to atmosphere. Uh, atmospheric pressure, we don't care if this is curved from this side or if this is straight. What we care about is the height, and that is both the same. That is because from this side and from this side, it's open to the same environment. It is open to atmospheric pressure. Uh, the pressure in the liquid column BC therefore equals to the amount by which the liquid gas has uh, exceeded the atmospheric pressure. Now in this case, what happens is that uh, instead of it being open to the atmosphere, this side is bound to uh, gas supply. And what happens is that in this gas supply area, the the balance that was already there it is uh, disrupted, and now you can see that the level of A is uh, lower than that of BC. Now. It's very important to note that if, if one level is lower than the other level, it indicates that uh, the pressure where the side is below has is applied with uh, more pressure. So what that basically does is the gas has higher pressure than atmospheric pressure instead of having uh, lesser pressure. So now what's exactly the deficiency or what's exactly the uh, difference between these pressure is uh, how we calculated by the difference between the heights between these two levels. So the height or uh, the depth between B and A that gives us H and if we multiply that H with the rho and G it will give us the pressure difference and then add it with environment B uh, sorry atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure plus rho G H will give us the gas pressure or the uh, pressure that is being applied by the gas supply on the other end. So this is supposed to be a moving jet. It doesn't really work right now. 
for the now you're going to talk about uh, mercury barometer. Now in mercury barometer what happens is that um, now what happens is that in mercury barometer okay the UDO manometer that we studied earlier is very um, useful when we are talking about when we talk about the what do you call them the, the comparison of when when we're basically comparing two liquids or any kind of two fluids or their pressures. So however if we want to find out the the atmospheric pressure it's very important to use barometer. So in barometer what happens is that you have an inverted uh, test tube or an inverted tube that is inserted in a main cylinder or a very huge trough. A simple barometer is shown the pressure at x uh, due to the rate of column of mercury at y. So the pressure at x means over here due to the rate of column of x y equals to the atmospheric pressure on the surface of the mercury in the pool. The height of x y is given in millimeters of mercury. The vertical height of the column is unchanged. The unit is tilted. It will still stay the same. So what happens is that atmospheric pressure is being applied from this side. So uh, because of that, it's really pushing this liquid in the uh, cylinder. This will push the liquid inside this small test tube and after some time after some adjustment the mercury level will find a uh, stagnant height and when it is reached that specific height will calculate the measurement of the of the column x y or the column of this height of mercury level and then multiply it with rho g where g would be 9.8 of 10 and rho would be that of mercury uh, mercury is the medium that is being used in this case because uh, it's basically the optimum uh, liquid or the optimum medium uh, because of its density that it really does not require a very long tube uh, to demonstrate this experiment or make this instrument work and it you know also does not really require a very small that it's very that, it, that the medium is so thick that difference in height is very less and it's not very sensitive and not very accurate so this is basically the perfect arrangement that we find in order to find out the atmospheric pressure and this is basically how it works in this case we have water instead of uh, instead of mercury and um, that's because and you can all, also see that the barometer is really huge in comparison to the human so that also tells us that you know the, that that how mercury is basically the optimum liquid for this if you search on internet you'll find out how uh, if you have water or alcohol or any other medium you'd require so much a larger height of the column or the tube. That's it. Thank you.